Performing malware analysis can truly make a difference during an investigation. By sharing it on a sandbox, you could accidentally reveal your hand to an attacker who might be monitoring for signs that their code has been uploaded for analysis. It's fine if you are not an expert analyst, but you should know basic static and dynamic analysis. Static analysis involves examining software or files without executing them. And dynamic analysis involves executing software or files in a controlled environment to observe their behavior during runtime. Today, we will perform static analysis on a doc file. Let's use file command to see what the file actually is. It appears to be rich text format, and you can see the size of the file as well, which is 12 kilobyte. Now, you might have a lot of questions in mind. For example, what does this file do? What would happen if I execute this file? What are the content of this file? When was this file created? Things and questions like that might be on your mind. Now we will use another tool called EXIF tool, which will give us some more info on that file. So as you can see in the file modification that probably this file was created around that time. The reason I said probably, because these timestamps can be changed. And being a security analyst, you should take a note of this. As you saw that we found out that it's a rich text format document, or RTF document, we have a couple of tools to use to further investigate. The first tool that we will use is called RTF Dump. I recommend that you definitely check out all the switches and options available. Once we use this tool on our file, you can see some more info as well. Let me break it down for you. What does this data mean? In this data, the C shows how many child the certain level has. P is the file position. L show the length of the bytes. H show how many hexadecimal digits exists. B is the binary entry, and finally the U means unknown characters. When analyzing a doc file or a PDF file, we look for risky keywords or tags, which in our case we can see we have two objects. Now these are considered risky keywords, because it may contain something interesting. With RTF Dump, we can look at those objects by selecting it by their stream number. Now let's select the stream 2 to see if we can get some more info. And this appears to be some hexadecimal format. Luckily, RTF Dump can decode the hexadecimal format. Let's do it. And we no longer see those zeros and stuff, but still, there is nothing that we can understand and make sense. Let's try another stream. Nothing here as well. Now let's try stream 1. Still the same, but this time we do see some words. Again, as an analyst, you do need to take note of that. Now we will use another tool to get some more info as well. And by using that tool, we can see that there is something interesting. Right away, you can see that there is a CVE that could be exploited. Now you know that whatever is in this code could possibly be used, exploit this vulnerability, so better stay away, right? But wait, don't quit yet. You still need to answer a lot of questions that we previously asked ourselves. Let's go even deeper to get more info on that. Now let's extract this object as well to possibly see if we can find more info from this tool. Now let's run a file command on this new binary as well. And it says it's a composite document file v2. Now let's see the hexadecimal for this object as well with a tool called xxd. Again, it's still the same data, but if you scroll to the top, you see the first couple bytes. Let's see if we can find any signature files for this. If you are wondering, what is a file signature? It is used to verify or identify the content of a file. For example, we have our first bytes as D0CF11. As you can see, this is linked to an OLE file. If you are wondering what is OLE, it is used by Microsoft to embed object or item into a document, and attackers are taking advantage of that and abusing it to deliver malware that way. Now let's analyze the OLE file as well. Now we will use a tool called OLE Dump, which is pretty similar to the RTF Dump tool. We have seen those words before as well. Let's go to a different stream we did earlier with RTF Dump. And now as you can see, it doesn't appear to be something that you can read, which kind of give you the idea that it might be a shell code. Shell code in simple is used to exploit a vulnerability or run some instructions to do certain task. Let's use another tool for this purpose. This tool is called SCDBG. First thing first, let's select a file. 
and I will check the mark create dump so that I can see what this tool output and we will also select find SC so that it can find any possible shell code. Options are set. Now hit launch. It has found seven entry points that has a function called get proc address. What is a get proc address? Basically, it retrieves that address or an exported function or a variable from a DLL or dynamic link library. To put it more simple, it's instructions on what to do next. Okay, so now let's select the first index zero to see more details. Now you can see information that you can read. Right away you see an executable aro.exe. And the shellcode is instructing to load a library called urlmon. And down here it says to download a file from this URL. And the executable is called jan2. It tells it to put that file in a location application data with the name aro.exe. And from a security analyst perspective, if you see to happen this, you can start right away what devices in the network communicate with this URL so you can scope out for maybe compromised machines. From there, you can try to perform some dynamic analysis on that as well. Remember this is not it. You can't just call this a malware even though in this example it is a malware but in real life scenario, you will need to do additional dynamic analysis to see how it behaves upon running it. Lastly, let me tell you something important. Please do not just upload the document into VirusTotal or whatever you use right away, because these documents might contain really sensitive information that you do not want to disclose to anyone. What you can do to prevent that is to extract a hash of the file and search the file with the hash. That way you don't accidentally share sensitive info. Let's extract the hash value and search it on VirusTotal. And that wraps the tutorial as well. You can have a look around on the virus total for additional info as well. I almost forgot to tell you that this example lab is from letsdefend.io. I will leave the link in description for you. I hope you learned something valuable. I'd appreciate a thumbs up and a follow. Thanks.